1000 subscribers that's a number that usually don't think it's that big because we are used to seeing channels with like a couple hundred thousand millions of subscribers right but when you are a content creator getting to this 1000 subscriber with barely any you know marketing budget and things like that just by you know on your own it really does feel a lot it, you know 1000 subscribers what, what does that mean it's just a number on the screen right but if you think about it that 1000 people clicked subscribe under your channel and they want to see they want to see what they want to see more of your own creation they want to see more of your videos it really get into the perspective of like them like i make videos that a thousand people want to watch it's really something special uh, at least that's how i view it but as i promised i made a q a section on our discord server on the writers guild which you can join by the link down below and i'll just get straight into those questions so first one eclipsis asks where are the best places on and offline to get real life stories for writing and tabletop rpg inspiration well mr Eclipses. Well, the, the best way would be to start with history, right? But not the uh, politics and you know, wars and, and combat and politics. I'm talking about like smaller stories, smaller individual stories that people might not know. A great example that I found personally, which is which is pretty great, is Count Dankula. The, the, the YouTube channel is called Count Dankula, and he made a series of videos called The Absolute Mad Lads. It's, it's it's very hilarious and in those in this series of videos he talks about people who had very wacky lives and wacky experiences things that if you would take lives of those real life people who have their life documented you would take that and put into your story people would think that you know of everything that you wrote about those characters are very contrived and there's a, a lot of plot armor uh, it can give you a context that there's actually a lot of quote-unquote plot armor in real life. It's just, you know, all of it is based on context. So I would recommend to do that, to maybe check his channel, or maybe if you want to find smaller stories, is to look for, I believe it's called the Storytelling Jam, the uh, the Moth. Moth storytelling jam, something like that. I don't remember the exact same name. There's also this book that I remember called Storyworthy. Uh, I mentioned it a couple of times because it's, it's a great book if you want to write very life, full of life stories, stories that are very personal and are more grounded. Because you know, sure, we all love you know big epic battles and and this huge web of intrigues and in the politics and fantasy and you know and fiction. But actually, the stories that are closer to us, that are more mundane and more grounded. Actually, actually, people feel more uh, related to those stories because you know how many people can relate to taking part in a huge battle. <laughs> Not that many, but if you write, for example, about a brother and a sister trying to survive in a very difficult environment when they're trying to survive, trying to uh, to make very hard decisions for themselves, that is much closer to people, right? And stories like that can feel very more immersive and people can more relate to those things and in story worthy the author matthew dix he talks about writing your own stories stories of your own life your own memory because you might think that maybe your life is boring it's actually not because if you start to think about the experiences that you have throughout the day even if you go to the grocery store just you know you will you know you'll later come back home and you will write those stories try to remember like very specific scenes you will see that there are scenes that you don't think about much but when you actually try to think about like for example there's a grocery store and there is this you know this woman was trying to buy something and you know her daughter actually wanted something else and you know you can have that scene and this scene can seem very you know irrelevant but it can you know if you write it down it can be very powerful because there are a lot of small things in it actually a great example there is a memory that i very much cherish because it really engraved itself into my memory where i for the first time i visit krakow the one of the biggest city in poland and i remember that it was evening and i was walking by uh, the the main square the, the market square and i started to hear scream i mean not scream but like 
someone crying very very loudly and i don't mean like crying like something bad happened like a cry of a mother who would lost her daughter that was this type of cry like it was horrible and there was a, a woman like 20 year old 22 year old woman who just was walking she was crying really really loudly and then she collapsed on her knees and started to cry very very loudly everyone on the on the square it was actually pretty late late evening and everyone on the square was looking at her and there was a mime who approached her and who was trying to you know do the mime thing and try to um, ch cheer her up and you know it's a small thing it's not really that important but this this engraves itself into my mind so much this this small thing that you might think it's not very important and there are things like that in your life you may think that your life is boring and you do the same thing every single day try to think every single day try to make an exercise and remember things that happen mundane things that you may think are not important like i was in the grocery and came back from the grocery store like what they see that captivated me even even a little bit like even if your life is not that intriguing and full of explosions you can see you know other people in the street you can see how they behave you can see someone regularly and then one day that person walks alone maybe something happened you know what i mean like there's plenty of stories that to, that to be found around us especially if you go out to the world cesare asks how long does it take you to write and prepare an rpg campaign from the moment of the idea to the first session with the player um, a lot of people who play RPG campaigns can be surprised uh, about my answer because it took it take me around half a year to a year to prepare a, a RPG campaign. And you may think like, what the hell do you prepare to, to take that takes you half a year to a year for a campaign? It's because I make something called I call them open world grand campaigns. Like for example, if you have when you have strategies and then you have the um, grand strategies like Crusader Kings. Basically, my campaigns are grand RPG campaigns. What I mean by that is I create the entire world. I create connections, uh, specific politicians in specific places, specific events that will happen, probably, because if the player will start playing someone who do something, they will provide some information to someone, they will do something that will destabilize a certain region that can change. I basically allow characters players to play whoever the hell they want like you can even play as a king of a huge empire then there would be you would be an emperor not a king never mind i always require from my players a backstory like huge backstory that i can implement into the broader world and it's actually implemented into the world like for example if you write down in your character backstory that your uncle is the governor of this like province then he will be a governor of this province and you can go to it and you know i try to very much immerse the player into the world by integrating very very thoroughly into the world and the entire story of the campaign is usually a overlapping world story so i don't make a story that the player needs to go linear and they cannot go away because the game master have nothing planned in this town so you need to go this way no in my world you can go wherever you want you can go just just anywhere because everywhere there is something planned and you know the character player usually i don't add teleportation because that would complicate a lot of things because because before they reach a certain place i will be able to flesh out some things because there are you know i don't want to go into much details but i prepare quite a lot of things i prepare the entire cultural you know environment the differences between cultures between those factions there are factions here factions that the crime rate here crime rate that there are history events and the main plot of the campaign is usually the world story so for example uh, to take as an example our world if i would be making an rpg campaign in world war ii then the entire plot of this campaign would be World War II, would be the Nazi Germany rise to power and the the, the war in the entire world. That would be the main um, story of our, my campaign. And you can play as anyone, right? And in my RPG campaign it's the same. You, you, can play, you can play anyone. You can play just a farmer, you can play a king, you can play anyone. And then there, is, there are things happening. Of course those things can change depending on what you do as a player. Yeah, that's, that's the answer for your question. Steely asks, what other types of video are you considering or already planning to include on your channel in the future? Well, 
you can see already one in Friday I released uh, something new, something completely different than usual. I'm planning to continue the tea time, the more short improvised videos. There will be like random videos about a random subject. Uh, I'll actually try to streamline them more so you'll be able to differentiate a tea time video to a world building guide video and try to stream streamline them more. Those videos will be like me talking about stuff. I will stumble a lot, I will talk about random shit, and I will try to put my thoughts into the videos. I will try to make them, more of them now. Uh, definitely the world building guides are here to stay, I will continue doing them, but I want to add something more. So definitely I am planning to do story dissections of uh, movies, of TV shows, of... Um, specific video games, scene dissections, because for example, you know, you, you might think like even if you write books and I talk about a visual medium, which is a movie, if I talk about like a specific scene happening, you can still learn a lot from it because writing is still writing. There are differences, of course, between mediums, but, you know, a story section is always the same. Uh, there are also, of course, passion projects that I have, uh, videos that I spoken about earlier in some of my other videos. Videos that are of videos that I want to do that are huge passion projects that I want to make like a full, you know, six or eight hour video long, long video about like one specific topic, like a dissection of a story. Uh, definitely Kotor 2, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, because this game is bloody amazing. And there are no videos on YouTube that go into detail as much as I want to go. There are videos that talk about Kreia, one of the like bigger characters in that, and her philosophy. There are reviews who, yeah, sure, they're like two or three hour long, but they are not really good, going that deep into the story. They just go through it, but they don't really like immerse deep into every single section of the story. Uh, and I want to do like like a full story, yeah, like world building, uh, the, the 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 characters, the story, how it, it's bloody amazing. Like if you if you like uh, if you like RPGs, if you like very deep stories that are also very logical and a lot of background stuff happening that you need to figure out on your own, definitely check Star Wars uh, the old uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic too. Even if you don't like Star Wars, because this game doesn't really feel Star Wars. Uh, like that's even one of the themes of the story is that it's trying to be kind of a something completely different than Star Wars. Anyway, and Ghost in the Shell. There's no video about like a story dissection of Ghost in the Shell, and definitely the movie from the '95 movie Ghost in the Shell, the in the two seasons that are actually good because anything else outside of those. You know those things that I mentioned. That's for a couple of smaller movies, but back to the topic. Those two seasons, the uh, standalone complex and the second gig. Those two seasons and the '95 movie. I want to make a full, you know, story dissection. I, I just love those two things. Ghost in the Shell and uh, Kotor 2 are my favorite stories of all time. I absolutely love them, um, and they are very much underappreciated. Even though Kotor 2 kind of, you know. Emer emerged again after some time so those passion projects I want to do at some point but for now I feel I would not do them justice with my level of um, editing with and I cannot pay for an editor for like a seven or eight hour long uh, video I don't have that much money <laughs> I want to know that I will have a lot of subscribers that I will like I want a lot of people to experience that video and I want that video to be of high quality both of content and you know, editing. And of course, the world building dissections. <laughs> I know that uh, those of you who started my watching my channel with the uh, gothic world building dissections, you might feel a bit left out. I will come back to them, I promise. It's just I want to mix up my content and try to reach the people who want to learn how to write and try to mix those because if I would just be doing those, I would be more of an entertainment channel and I don't want to be an entertainment channel. Uh, I want to like be an educational channel that, that I help people with things that they struggle with. Uh, yeah, so that's your answer. <sighs> Wasi W A S I asks, how do you approach your writing process in terms of thinking, structure, etc.? Well, 
it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I try to streamline it a lot because that helps with, you know, structure is one of those things that you should not overthink. Uh, I believe that content is much more important. Of course, how it is structured, it's also very important because people need to un need to understand how you create certain things and how one thing follow the next. What I do is I call it the, the pyramid scheme. So basically I have a pyramid and on the top of the pyramid is the topic of the video, the specific subject. So let's say the last world building guide, the world building cultures, right? So that's 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 the, the top of the pyramid then it goes down into bullet points of like very general things so world building cultures what can i talk about world building cultures okay so how are they created um different examples um how they influence a world how can they be you know integrated in the broader world and you know just just make steps how you can do that right so then we go into the next layer and we i take one of the bullet points and then i go into smaller bullet points like go, i go deeper into the data so let's say how are they created uh geography you know, the history etc you know and then i go each of those bullet points i go even deeper and deeper and that's how the script is created i usually don't write i don't start with writing scripts i start with putting bullet points and then expanding those bullet points and then I, you know, transform those bullet points into the actual script. And of course, I do the redraft because if you write anything, make redraft, at least like two, three, four, five of them. Redraft is extremely important, trust me. Armored Mike asks, uh, what is your opinion on the 2024 and forward in book publishing, how hard it is and how hard it will be? Sadly, I cannot answer that question fully. I am not a publisher, nor do I plan to publish a book. I'm planning to... I'm actually in the middle of publishing something else, not a book, something else, which also includes storytelling and world building. It just, I'm just, I just chose a different medium. So I don't know much about books. What I can tell from my own perspective and from the fact that I'm interested in economics and in broader... Um, you know, how the world is going. I believe that AI will change a lot. How much, I cannot tell you yet. For now, for the, like, the, the very near future, AI will s certainly influence a lot of um, simple stories. Like, if you are an average writer, you will struggle uh, because AI can replace average people. Uh, it's, it might sound cruel, but that's how it is, that's how it will be. Uh, AI is here to, here to stay, no matter if you like it or not. AI is here to stay and it will change the world. You know, we need to adapt. It, that's that's the best what we can do as humans, right? We are the best at adapting. Uh, certainly audiobooks are becoming more and more popular and books overall, I am afraid, will become less popular. Although I cannot tell you for 100% sure because when you look at Gen Z or if you look at the younger generation, they have very, very low attention span. You know, the, the, the constant scrolling and the inability to focus on one thing. I have a younger brother and I can see that already. Like, he cannot watch a movie that is... If a movie is one hour long or more, he cannot just sit in one place. He needs to do something. Now he's boring. Let's skip, let's skip, let's skip. You know, he cannot like, just sit down and watch. And if you, you know, if you, re if you are reading books, then that means you have a healthy focus. Uh, but sadly, the younger generation is getting more and more, you know, they're losing that, so definitely, I think it would, they will be less popular. But different version of book writing may be more popular, like the audiobooks, for example. They can also enhance the storytelling perspective because if you're write, uh, reading a book, you know you cannot really imagine the voice of somebody unless you, as a, a writer, describe the voice. It's hard to imagine, and a good voice actor in like ambient noise can very, very much elevate a scene. I was listening to a couple of audiobooks because, for example, I stopped reading books some couple of years ago. I started to listening to them to audiobooks because I just do a lot. I have no time to just sit and read. I just listen to audiobooks when I do other stuff. And I was listening to a Horace Heresy book, which it was actually pretty great. And the you know the ambient and the sound of walking and the pavement, like this, very very elevate a scene, very much elevate a story. So audiobooks will be more popular, I believe, because they require less attention. You can just do stuff and you know listen to them, and people are getting less attentive. So I believe books will start to lose the appeal, 
I will not say that they will disappear, at least not in the short term, no way, uh, but they will be start to become less and less appealing. Scrog asks, what kind of music do you like to listen to when creating a world, if at all? Well, I actually do like listening to music, but not just music, not, not songs. I What I usually do, I find ambient music. For example, if I write my world, which is... Okay, I'll be doing a bit of spoilers, which is more of a grim, dark fantasy, uh, low fantasy, grim, dark, then I listen to a lot of gothic ambient noises. Uh, if, you know, I will edit it properly, I will put it here now on the screen, uh, what I'm listening to. Of course, depending on what I'm writing. If I'm writing an RPG campaign in a sci-fi setting or a modern setting, then of course there are different types of ambient mm, sounds, ambient videos that I listen to. Because listening to music, especially songs that play, especially like if, if you listen to rap or, or metal, then they can be very distracting and I prefer something to make me immerse into whatever I'm writing. Lady Igor asks, how much should people expect their audience to understand things that aren't explicitly stated? That is a strange question, but let me try to ask it as ask it, answer it as much as best as I can. How much do people expect their audience to understand things that aren't explicitly stated? Depends on what you are targeting. Uh, that's the best way to think of it. You can never fully predict everyone because there are different people who will you know, grab your story if you're asking from the perspective of a writer. Uh, me, myself, for example, uh, I can tell you an example, right? Me, myself, I played Kotor 2 uh, when I was very young, I was like 12 years old. And when I was playing that game, I didn't really understand the story. It was actually a very complex story. So... I felt like I am stupid. <laughs> I know it's, it might sound strange, but I was a twelve-year-old. So, you know, I, I didn't understand the deeper things, and you know, in in the plot, like the, the the peak of storytelling that I experienced, I understood was Pokemon <laughs> back in the day. So that was obvious that I couldn't understand. So just exp just think about what is your target audience and what you are writing to. Try to like if you are talking about you know publishing, try to think about who you will promote, you know, marketing is very important. Who do you promote your story to? It's actually very important because if you promote, if you make a children's story and you make a political <laughs> political intrigue in a children's story, uh, that can be, you know, they cannot really expect that, they cannot understand that and it can be not appreciated. Um, so definitely, if you're talking about from the writer's perspective, you need to have a target in mind Think about I'm writing to this type of people. What is my, what is my ideal reader? What is who is the person who would love my story? And just try to make that story for that person. Make that story for yourself before you wrote it. So, for example, if you write something and you think if I would be like two, three years younger before I started writing it, and I would read that story, I would be amazed by it. And like, like genuinely, I'm not talking about having a big ego. I'm talking like genuinely thinking, like, damn, I, I like it. If you have that feeling inside of you, and I'm not, and you know, it, that feeling is not based on your ego thinking, yeah, it's mine, so that's why it's good. And you genuinely love your creation, you read it and like, damn, it's pretty good. So that's how, that's what you should expect, right? Select your target and make it all for your target audience. Uh, the same with YouTubers. If I'm making a video called a beginner's guide to world building, obviously I will not expect people to know much about world building because it's a beginner guide, right? So I am expecting beginners to click on the video. Badger asks, how do you deal with writing characters whose opinions and deeds contradict your own ideology and societal norms? Essentially, is there a way to avoid alienating your readers when your characters stumble into ethical questions terrain? It is a very good question because it is difficult to do, especially in the like I don't want to talk about politics, but if you are on Twitter and on YouTube, you certainly found discourse about a certain subject and you will have people uh, that are... A lot of people nowadays are very extreme on what they... on how they judge other people and how they judge a different people's perspective. Uh, especially that they judge from the modern days perspective. For example, I don't understand why people obsess so much over people in the past uh, being slavers for example like four or five hundred years ago 
because back at you know at that time it was something normal and not just in Europe or in the US it was normal everywhere so obsessing over things like that you need to first of all you need to normalize a if you if we are talking about specifically writing when you create a world try to normalize something that from our own perspective is reprehensible morally bad so you know the example that i gave you previously let's say you write a story that takes place in an imperium where slavery is a common thing like everyone expect to have like everyone that is a normal citizen expect to have at least one slave and that's something normal in that fictional world try to before you you know present your character try to normalize to the reader that this in this world this is normal don't judge those people because they don't know any better that is their world and trying to in that world trying to scream that oh slavery bad would be look upon you know like that would be something weird and strange because if you think that 300 400 500 years ago uh, back in those days you would be the leader of a anti-slavery movement no you would not you would probably be okay with it like almost everyone else because that back in those days it would be strange to think otherwise so try to you know normalize in this fictional world this thing that this in this world this is normal this society you know accept that and try to not you know demonize or do it the, the, the extreme other way try to make it more mundane like like something normal like like in this world this example uh, this is having a slave is so nor as normal as just going to the grocery store right because if you try to portray your character in a very extreme way like sure in this world this is normal but my character treat his slaves like shit or the other way around uh, my character is, is very uh, virtuous and whenever he buy those slaves he immediately release them and have you know make friends with them <laughs> that wouldn't pro that probably wouldn't happen Th that person would probably be seen as a freak both one way and the other way uh, either if he treats them bad or very good because that would be out of the societal norms in this fictional universe i believe that you should look into the story if you know the channel shadiversity shad from that channel wrote a book a shadow of the conqueror or something like that and when i was listening to booktubers reviewing his book they very often say that oh they couldn't relate to the main character because the main character in the past did something reprehensible something really really morally bad uh, and they cannot feel immersed even though the story is a kind of a redemption story but of course i'm telling you what those people in those reviews are saying i didn't read the book so i don't know but you know i know that this is an issue it's, it's very hard to do and it's kind of a problem of today's societal norms that people are not very open to understanding and remember if you understand something that doesn't mean that you agree with something right it is a difficult thing i would not say to you that yeah, it's very simple i will not tell you a tip that will suddenly fix a problem like that but what you can do to prevent that as much as you can try to normalize that uh, try to you know make it understandable within the world before you introduce that character or before you introduce that this character did something reprehensibly bad yeah so that is the entire q a section for this special video uh, it was supposed to be released yesterday but i actually made the first draft of this video and that's why you should redraft even your videos because my first draft of the video was almost two hours long because i took one question and i spoke about it for like an hour <laughs> and i was like hmm i think that's too long <laughs> so now the raw footage is 35 minutes long i hope that you, i answered your question as best as i could and i satisfied your question and yeah expect more videos more different more very varied videos and more videos overall because i'm planning to let's say put some engine put some fuel to my engine so expect more videos and more frequently. I had some pretty bad time in January and I hope the next month will be more productive in terms of what I create. For now, have a great day.